If anybody in the audience would like to address the board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda, please feel free to do so now. Item 6A, consideration of possible action on the minutes of the board meeting of June 26, 2018. Second. Any discussion or questions on the minutes? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Item 7A, Finance Committee. Committee Chairman Donato, do you have a report? Yes, uh, the Finance Committee met yesterday. We went through all the bills and the check registries as well. And uh, item A1, we have a presentation of PFM consultants on our quarterly uh, updates. And, uh, and he is here to provide that for you. Um, the gentleman from PMF is here okay. to provide that for you. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Um, and for the record, your name please? Richard Batty. I'm with PFM. I'm a senior managing consultant with PFM Asset Management. So, Not my presentation. <laughs> Wouldn't be able to give you an educated discussion on this. Here's my presentation. Thank you. So the point is we want to make sure you get a broad overview of what we've been doing, the conditions that result behind that. Uh, to sort of start as a big picture, what we see in the economic conditions is basic economic condition. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, is that any better? It's not, it's not you. Okay. Hi, is this better? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just seeing my slide. And there's a, a printed copy of this also. So just to give you background of what we see on an economic condition, I'm not going to go into every point on this. The details there are more for your information if you want to read it later. But basic economic conditions remain very strong. We had growth on an advanced number of 4.1% in the second quarter. I've seen estimates for the third quarter, which is still early, of about 4.3%. So generally, we're seeing strong economic growth. We saw unemployment at about un rate of about 4%. It was up from 3.8, but that was because more people were in the workforce. Business confidence is up. Consumer confidence is up. So overall, basic economic fundamentals remain strong. <coughs> The one thing that we've seen, especially in 2018, is an increase of market uncertainty and volatility in the markets. Uh, you know, whether it's going to be a trade war, what's happening, you know, the, the latest talk is Turkey, but, you know, each day there seems to be one, another thing that could cause disruption and basic economic trends. Um, sorry. So this is, uh, let me start again. So this is just a summary of the conditions. Like I said, GDP is in the upper left-hand corner. Um, inflation measures on the upper right. Lower left is the unemployment rate. And the lower right is consumer confidence. So again, these are all at favorable levels. And if we go to the next slide, what this has made for interest rates is that interest rates are up fairly significantly over the past year. So we were at about 1.38 at the end of it, at June of last year. We're at, sorry. We're at 1.89 at the June 30th of the last year. We're at about 2.53. So we've seen a significant increase in interest rates. But the thing you'll see on the chart is that a lot of the increase came before May of this year. And since then, we've sort of moved sideways because there's been that increased uncertainty. If we go to the next slide, what we're showing is the yield curve. So just to give you an indication of what the yields have gone up over across the yield curve. A lot of the movement's been on the short end of the yield curve, which has been driven by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates three times since last year. Uh, the movement on the upper end hasn't been as significant just because there's still uncertainty about future economic growth and inflation. 
If I go to the next slide, one of the factors that's also coming in place is while interest rates have been coming up, we had seen the deal difference between a corporate security and a treasury security, is this what this chart is showing you, had, had been trending down for a long time. But when we saw in January of this year that that trend sort of reversed because there was, again, increased uncertainty in the market. So people who had been willing to accept a lower yield on corporate security suddenly said, well, I think there's more risk in the market. I want uh, more yield for mine. What happened is that decreased the value of the corporate securities in your portfolio because when yields go up, market values go down. But it did create a buying opportunity because the yields that you could get on new corporate securities was higher. So this is just showing what we're seeing is for the for the second quarter, the trend wasn't it went down and then went up, so the net change was wasn't significant. But again, corporate securities at the level we find more attractive right now. So what does this mean for your portfolio? Again, this is sort of the detail. Uh, I'll leave it to you read later if you want to, uh, but go over various slides. So this is showing you the change in composition in the in the portfolio from the end of last quarter to the end of the second quarter. And what we see is what we're looking for is opportunities to move from one sector to another sector depending on where we see value. So in this, in this quarter, what we saw is there was corporate value to be added, that treasuries did not add as much value, we used them as a selling opportunity, and agencies offered some value. And this is just to show you on the next page. The TAN on the left side is sales or maturities, most of it was maturities in the portfolio. And then the blue is on the right is new purchases during the quarter. So you can see the relative changes on where we went from one sector to the other sector. The next is just sort of a basic uh, description of the overall portfolio. On the left-hand side is the basic statistics. On the right-hand side, the credit quality, which we means very well in all of compliance with the agency's uh, policy and the Upper right just shows you the sector composition. What we're seeing is very well diversified portfolio. What we see on the bottom chart is a maturity distribution. And per the direction we've been given, we've kept maturities under two years. In an erasing interest rate environment, that's actually been to your benefit because there's been less market value depreciation in your portfolio. The question becomes now is at this point in the interest rate cycle, do you want to maintain that? and you keep a fairly short average maturity, or do you say that interest rate and rates are now at a level that it might be worthwhile to extend a little bit, to lock in rates? The difficulty is really knowing, well, what interest rate's gonna do? Because while we expect them to go up over the coming year, because the Fed is anticipating to raise interest rates, as I was showing you on the two-year chart, is that interest rates have flattened out somewhat recently because we've seen uncertainty. So it's that balancing act between basic economic trends, which would suggest higher rates, and greater uncertainty in the market. So that's something that you just want to start thinking about. And it's a, a discussion I've had with a lot of our clients in the sense that some of our clients are saying, I want to stay short because it provides me extra liquidity. I give up some yield. And I have other clients who say, well, rates are now at a, uh, a level we haven't seen in a number of years. I start to, like, start to like locking in a few of those so I can make sure if interest rates do fall, I've got something in locked in longer. Does that all make sense? On the next slide, we're just showing you the sector distribution of how it's changed over the past four quarters. Nothing really significant. We moved from one sector to the other sector, depending on relative value, but overall, the portfolio remains very well diversified. On the next slide, is just showing you the total return performance of the portfolio for the past quarter, the past year, and the past three years. And what we're seeing is your performance, if I compared it to a longer duration portfolio or a longer average maturity portfolio, it's been very favorable. Overall returns have been fairly low just because interest rates have been low for most of this period. But your portfolio continues to perform well. This chart, the top part is just to show you the change in the two year over the past year. The bottom two tables are to show you market value earnings and accrued accrual basis earnings over the past fiscal year. And what I wanted to sort of highlight for your portfolio is the lines of change in value. For market value, on a market value basis, when interest rates go up, the market value goes down. But because your average maturity is fairly short, it hasn't had a big impact. And so when you compare the far right as far as the totals for the total re the net earnings on a market value basis and an accrual basis, they're fairly 
uh, close to each other. If I had a longer duration portfolio, those would be significantly different over this time frame. On the next page, just showing you some of the things that we're looking forward to, is that on the upper left is that corporate yield spreads have come down a little bit, still remain at attractive level. The bottom left is the implied market anticipation of what we see for rate hikes and that we see a strong likelihood of a rate hike in the September meeting. The lower right hand is just to show you some of the economic indicators that we need <coughs> overall high levels. The top right chart is just to show you the difference in the yield between a two-year and a 10-year treasury. Because often you hear about the yield curve inverting when we hit a recession, and we've seen the yield curve flatten out. But we still don't think it's indicative of a recession at this point. And this is to show you the chart that's saying from the June meeting, the Federal Reserve still anticipated that we see two additional rate hikes during um, 2018, most likely in the September and December meeting, assuming basic economic trends continue. And this is just to reiterate the uh, information I was talking about, that we still think the basic trends continue. We look for relative value and opportunities, uh, but overall continue with the same basic strategy, absent a change of direction. And the rest of the presentation is just background information and also any other questions. Any questions? What's your recommendation for you? As far as um, maturity distribution, I would start looking at it, that it might be a good time to extend. I wouldn't think it's something that you have to do immediately or something else, but um, I would think between now and the end of the year would be a good time to maybe extend the duration of the portfolio. You have an average maturity of about nine tenths of a year. You might go to a one to three type of limitation, which would be an average maturity of about one and a half years. So six tenths of a year, so not significantly, absent any change in underlying objectives. I mean, I've had other clients say to me that I'm not going to need this money forever. I want to extend it. And we've extended it even longer, but that wouldn't be our recommendation. We'd say a modest extension at this point, and then evaluate as interest rates still. So for up to nine months to a year and a half? So. It, exactly, yeah. And what does our finance committee do that? I, I think we should consider it. However, I am a little confused. It appears that the uh, yield curve is flattening yep. and the spread is thinning out. Exactly. It doesn't appear to be much to gain in going out longer. It, it, exactly. And that's one of the conundrums in this type of environment that a lot of times when you actually want to extend a portfolio is when the yield curve begins to flatten because what happens after the yield curve flattens is interest rates start falling down. That we reach a certain point that we hit a recession and what the Federal Reserve does is start cutting interest rates and so you see interest rates fall substantially after that point. But again, the, the question would become is when do you do that? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? And as I was telling Teresa earlier, that if I could predict that with absolute certainty, I'd be a billionaire, and unfortunately, I'm not a billionaire. So it, it, be, it becomes what you think on average. That it, you were exactly right, that there's not as much advantage going from a, a one-year security as a three-year security as there was a year ago. but. If interest rates start falling, you'd want to be in that three years secure. Did that answer that? Yes, it did. Thank you. So, how does that extending that out make you more secure as far as the interest rate drop? So, the, the whole idea is that the, each time the security matures, you have to reinvest in the new environment. So, as interest rates have been moving up, your securities mature more rapidly because they have shorter average maturity. So instead of a security maturing every year, an individual security, it might only mature once every three years. So over that three year period, you've locked it in. So if interest rates fall, you still keep that interest rate. The difficulty again is if interest rates double from where we are, you've locked in a three year rate when interest rates are now going to be substantially higher. So if we think rates are going to go down lower, you would want to extend it. it, it exactly. Exactly. If you don't think interest rates are going to go up substantially from this point in, in time, and I still think there's still upward movement on that, that it would start being an opportunity to extend the duration of the portfolio, start walking in the portfolio. And again, we're talking very incrementally. We're not going from you know, one year to four years. We're going one year to a year and a half, in a sense, or nine months to a year and a half. And 
and it doesn't happen overnight even if we change the policy because we have to wait for those assets to mature. A absolutely, and we can implement it over time. But it's the type of thing to start thinking about because again, things can change very rapidly. I don't have the chart in my presentation, but prior to the financial crisis, interest rates went up, 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 and everyone thought they were gonna keep going up a little more, and then the financial crisis hit, and then they went down significantly. So again, what that point is, I couldn't tell you if it's today, two years from now, it's difficult but to predict that, but it's the type of thing in, in this environment I think it's a good thing to start thinking about. But 18 months is still very Absolutely. Yeah, I think the plans are revisited. One of the indicators we're seeing um, that I work with is the housing market. And the housing market is, is uh, taking a lot longer to sell homes. And, and the inventory is gaining momentum right now. And of course, we're coming to the second half of the year. And that the housing market pulls down a little bit, which means people want to borrow money, which softens the money. So if we lock into some rates now, you know, six, eight months, we could gain um, additional uh, in income off the, our investments by doing that. And it, at this point, like you're talking about the yield curve being flat, it's not going to add some <coughs> interest to your yield, but it provides some downside protection, and over time, it will provide a better overall return. Though, being what you've done over the past several years has been very much to your benefit. Any more questions? Yeah, Jim. Uh, Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go over. Um, on 6, 8, uh, excuse me, uh, 7, 8, 1. Um, <coughs> Any more discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Heard. Okay, item A2, uh, the consideration of hospital action to approve the check register for July 19. Uh, 2018. Um, some uh, some information with regards to the uh, meeting coming up. Uh, we have uh, uh, several new uh, replacement well uh, new well production applications. Uh, we have uh, a couple of transfers that are on the uh, agenda, along with the, uh, uh, the various reports from uh, the. Uh, Engineer, uh, the administrative report with regards to the uh, uh, landowner representative nominations there. Uh, the first landowner um, uh, re-election is uh, going to be uh, uh, starting off uh, this, this next month or so for their election process. And then we'll have a attorney's report on compliance with the uh, judgment. So that uh, provides more the you know, status of what's coming up on the next uh, uh, water master meeting. I have a question. You mean, I think I, I, just, I, think I heard you say that replacement of wells? Yes, there's, uh, in other words, there, whether there were a replacement of an existing well or a new production well, we have several applications that have been submitted in, uh, for the uh, board to, or water master board to look at and review. Is Joshua on one of those? Uh, they are not. And it's uh, Ty Andresi, the one coming up, and he was going to rerun, or? <clears throat> I know, I, that's a process. Uh, there's a nomination and an election process. Right. And we'll know once the nomination process gets involved. And that'll be all the landowners voting on that? <coughs> that'll be the landowners voting on that. Only in Exhibit 4? It's the uh, same process as it was done in prior, prior years. As required by the court. Are the uh, replacement wells commercial or domestic? They're they're um, almost all domestic. Is there any permanent water transfers, or are they all leased? Yes, they're all permanent water transfers. So uh, the permanent rent, uh, permanent land transfers from FS Holding Land Holding <coughs> Company to Diamond Farming, uh, Grimway Enterprises, and Crystal Organic. 
does it say a price on the uh, so it does three. <laughs> Item 7C, personnel legal and JPI committee. Again, Chairman Hearn. Adam, again, I'll turn it over to Wayne and Matt. Except for my, uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I'm doing some more over here. You want to speak up a little bit? Uh, well, that's because I'm talking to myself. So, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so you can hear me. Uh, this doesn't seem to be working. You can just pull, pull the thing forward. Keep going next week. Okay, uh, we'll talk to you a little bit. This is the uh, personnel handbook uh, that was um, uh, reviewed and revised uh, for the agency. Uh, wanted to go over a little bit what the process was and uh, uh, so that the board would be, uh, could, could have that information. Um, we hired a consultant, CPS HR Consulting. They uh, uh, are, work for public agencies, and they, re they reviewed the existing handbook and the policies that we currently had. And then they developed a draft uh, handbook and job descriptions to comply with all the current state and federal uh, uh, employment laws. Uh, and at that point, the management staff reviewed the, uh, and provided comments back to CPS um, and then the second draft, which contained those comments, was then presented to the Personnel Committee. Uh, the Personnel Committee reviewed and commented over a series of meetings uh, with regards to their input, with regards to the uh, Personnel Handbook. And then all the staff received uh, the draft and review, uh, and their input was also considered. Next slide, please. And, and then, uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, we had the Aqua JPIA attorneys and administrative people review the handbook for us. You know, this is uh, the, our Aqua insurance folks. And then uh, we also had our own legal counsel review the handbook uh, to make sure it complied with uh, all the uh, uh, new laws that are necessary to do that. Next slide, please. Uh, and what our recommendations are, uh, for and the next steps is to uh, adopt a, a, an ordinance 18 02 to repeal all the previous ordinances dealing with personnel policies. It's the easiest way to clean this whole thing up, as recommended by our attorney, and then adopt a new resolution, R 18 96, to create a, a new revised employee handbook and job descriptions. Uh, the HR manager will dis distribute the employee handbook to all employees once it's approved. And uh, um, so we're, both myself and, and Matt are here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the staff report highlights all the changes that were made in the uh, uh, handbook. That concludes my staff report. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for the one? Do we have a motion? I'll make two or three. Second. Any further discussion? I'd like to make a comment. <coughs> I mean, you did. Um, I'm very impressed with what put together. I think I spent a lot of time. Um, doing that, and I, <clears throat> JPIA, I'm really confident with them because, you know, I've attended many of their um, presentations at the conferences, and uh, it's good to see that that everything is updated, and it also, it helps the uh, employees understand better what, you know, the communication between the board and, and them as well, so I think does a really good job. I think they did too. Thank you. And I want to thank Patty for all the hard work she did on that. She was driving for us on this and it came out outstanding. So, Patty, thank you very much. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, I have a question. When was the last time we was that? I think we've been actually done the actual day. It's quite a while. Frank, we, Frank, we, we, oh. we look back and it was the last time you were on the first number. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. 20, 25 years. Decades. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, 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 my assumption is, is that uh, that was approval of the Board Order 7C-2, which would repeal all the old ordinances, and then not to do another one to approve the new ordinance. Okay. Should, uh, should we follow the proper right? order? Yes. Procedurally, that'd be nice. was presented, it was amended, and so now you're going to vote on the amended motion, motion as amended. that Price will amended. be to pass this resolution. Without requiring an additional motion. Correct. Right, exactly. Okay. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. One more motion. Good job, John. One minute. Resolution R-18-96. Just right. Move to board. Move to board order 73. You can do that too. Oh, That's yes. what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll second that motion. Any more discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Anything else? Chairman Kerr. No. Thank you all very much. Good job. We appreciate the hard work from all of you. <coughs> Item 8, staff reports and recommendations. 8A, general manager's report. Yes. Thank you. Um, this is general manager's report for August 14, 2018. <coughs> Excellent. Uh, you can see uh, from, uh, from this uh, slide here that uh, it's our uh, uh, slide that shows precipitation. And you can see the 10-day forecast uh, indicates zero precipitation, which is what we would expect during this uh, particular period in the year. Um, but it uh, provides that information to us. It's, uh, here's the uh, familiar graph that you've all uh, seen before. Uh, the blue line uh, uh, indicates that we have precipitation of 40.9. Uh, 
uh, inches of rain, and I don't imagine, as you can see historically, it's always been flat during this period. So we're going to be below normal, uh, which is the shaded average of 51.8 inches for the uh, previous water year totals. So uh, that's kind of what we're looking at at the present time. Next slide. Uh, the good news is our reservoirs are all at averages, uh, with the exception of the uh, uh, a couple of the reservoirs, uh, uh, Orville in particular, is uh, below normal. Uh, but the good news is St. Louis Reservoir is about normal with regards to its storage capacity. Next slide. Um, we wanted to uh, provide you a little bit of an update on the construction work uh, associated with the main spillway. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, st structural concrete is uh, actually got a little video there to help things out. Um, structural concrete, concrete work is uh, being completed. Uh, this is uh, associated with the main spillway. It's uh, got a November 1st uh, deadline for completing all this uh, uh, work, and uh, so they're they're working like crazy to get all that work done. And this is a DWR uh, video that they provide to uh, uh, show some of the work that's being accomplished. We'll let that kind of finish up. You can see the work that they do. Uh, building these uh, large walls and some of the logistics of uh, building rooms and storage areas and all kinds of things. And they're trying to finish uh, the floor there. And look at the uh, elevation that the cranes uh, utilize to create the mats and various uh, uh, units. You know, that uh, blue rebar steel that's being installed there. So it's quite a deal. Next slide. Uh, and they're also working on the emergency. Uh, uh, next, next slide again, please. Uh, they're also working on the emergency spillway, and you can see that one's the one that uh, caused all the havoc before. Uh, they continue their concrete work, their buttress work being in place. You can see here the video showing some of that work. There wasn't a concrete pad for this water to, to, to flow onto <coughs> previously. Uh, now that will all be in there. Um, uh, once again, they have a November 1st uh, construction milestone for this particular work. And, uh, you know, these are, this is a monumental uh, uh, construction undertaking to do this uh, and complete all this work within that two year period. And uh, I will say it will be somewhat costly as we, uh, as we pay for it in the next 30 years or thereabouts. Um, when you say we pay for it? And it'll be a large part of it will be on the state water, uh, state water bills. This is the main source of uh, supply for the uh, for the western uh, water So anyway, next slide. You can see here. Here's the uh, the actual storage, and the actual storage is going down. It's way below the flood area. And it's artificially being uh, low due to the new dam operations during the construction project. Next slide. Uh, here's St. Louis Reservoir. You can see that uh, uh, the blue portion is the DWR share, and the, the lighter blue is the United States Bureau of Reclamation share. And as indicated, this is about average. We do want to have it fairly low uh, during going into the next. Uh, Rain season will happen in November and December, so we have plenty of uh, capacity to store additional water as it comes up. Um, next slide. Um, our allocation this year was 35% uh, through July. Um, we've uh, delivered to our customers 34,180 feet of uh, the water that we had in our TLA allocation. Uh, you can see here, as far as our uh, delivery, um, for conventional treatment plants, uh, you can see the numbers there. Last year at this time, we were doing 42 million gallons a day. Uh, we're doing 50.9 uh, million gallons a day. Um, and so the you know, warm uh, the warm summertime has been good for water sales for us. Uh, next slide. 
And as you can see, we're also uh, uh, our geopurification treatment uh, operations are continuing uh, on as always, and we're a little up on that too. So we're, we're you know, overall, we're, we're delivering more water. Next slide. You can see, uh, uh, if you look at the total, grand totals between the two, uh, last year we were at uh, 51 million gallons a day. Uh, we're currently doing uh, 63 million gallons a day, far less than what our capacity is, which is 155 million gallons. So we have tons of capacity uh, for, for future. Uh, next slide. Um, this has to do with our banking operations. We're currently off at the present time because so we're not banking anywhere. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the West Side Water Bank, uh, we're doing some work on the West Feeder, doing some repair work. Uh, the worst time to be uh, working or uh, to be banking is in the heat of the summer. So we're utilizing that time to uh, do some repair work on, on some of the facilities that are when we have better opportunities for uh, less uh, evaporation associated with our banking operations. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, water quality, uh, we've had uh, some uh, moss and algae issues which affected the capacity of the quartz hill plant here uh, during the summer, but uh, I have to give a lot of credit to the uh, treatment staff who uh, worked tirelessly uh, when this occurred and uh, was actually uh, taking uh, uh, filter, or not, uh, the, uh, Get um, the uh, sedimentation basins, they were taking one down every two days in order to clean it and get all the moss out and still maintain flow going across. A very, very difficult task that they undertook and, and they should be commended for that. Um, but uh, fortunately for us, uh, our flows have, were greatly reduced. The moss and the, and the algae have been reduced. Uh, DWR was tr uh, trying to do some treatments along the way, and those have been somewhat successful in helping us. And so we're meeting all of our customer demands without any uh, issues moving forward. Our water quality samples, uh, uh, THM samples, we did some uh, in-house process that look very, very good. So we anticipate we'll, we'll have our samples coming through. Even through, through all of these events that we've had during this very hot summer, uh, our water quality has been excellent in the plants. So, uh, a little bit of a uh, few updates. Uh, we have the uh, special AVAC board meeting on the budget workshop coming up uh, next Monday, August 20th at uh, 6.30. Uh, we have a water master board meeting August 27th and the uh, Urban Water Institute is uh, August 27th through the 24th. And next slide. And I would like to provide congratulations to our new directors who were reelected uh, to new four-year terms. Um, that, was, uh, that was very, very nice to see. So it was a rough campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it was a difficult campaign, yes. It was a four-year campaign. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was a four-year campaign. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that, uh, that concludes my report. Are there any questions we have? <coughs> Any questions for one? Yeah, Dwayne, what time is that water master meeting? Uh, it's 10 o'clock. Here, here at AVAC? Yeah. Okay. And what's our carryover in the San Luis State? Uh, what will we have? Uh, we'll have uh, between 15 and 20,000 starting in, 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 in October. Well, <coughs> we started. The, their water year is in October. Our water year starts in January. So we'll, we're, we're anticipating having that in January. summer peak period so that if we have a spike in demand in uh, that period because we don't do not have the slip line which would allow us to pump the water from our water banks up to the uh, quartz hill plant we have to have have to have a guaranteed supply in the summer months to the quartz hill treatment plant to meet customer demands coming from this facility when do we get our next allocation we start, uh, we start in December with 
an allocation based on the October, November grade period starts out low right. and then it picks itself up to what it turns about. So we don't really know what our final amounts are going to be till about May when we have an indication each month and it's kind of a, it's kind of like interest rates. You kind of, you know, see how it's going and, you know, so it depends on rainfall, depends on when the rain comes, how much comes, <coughs> if it comes at the right time, the San, San Joaquin River is flowing properly at the right time, we can get a lot of pumping, Article 21 water, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that calculation. So, yeah, it's a, you got a whole staff of people just trying to figure out what that's uh, going to end up being. But it, it's, not, it's not definitive. It's, it's kind of crazy because we end up trying to, we start selling water in January for, an assumption of we think we're going to get some, but we just don't know how much. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Brent. Item 9, director report. Rob? Well, I just, I think on behalf of all of us, I want to thank the public for the trust they've given us for not having candidates run against us. I do feel that this board is going to be incredible. Say congratulations to the board of directors for another four years. Thank you. Shelley? Um, I would just like to say congratulations to everyone as well. I know for the past four years I made that comment that we worked our campaign for the last four years, and what I meant by that was by trying to serve the public to the best of our ability and follow through with any campaign promises that we may have made when we were elected. And this board is very important to, I mean, this agency is a very important service to the community, and I feel very proud to serve with all of you as directors because you work very hard, as well as the staff and everybody here at AVAC. It's a pleasure being here. Right. I think they said it all. I, I would have to say, uh, in all the years I've been on this board, um, this is one of the most complete boards I've ever been on. Um, and how this board has worked with the adjudication, to work with the uh, water master group, uh, the representation, uh, going back and forth, and it's, it's, it's finally working very well together. And, and this is the beginning. I mean, we're building um, a major asset, a water asset for this valley for the future, for many, 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 many decades, that is now going to provide water um, with an insurance plan to ensure that the people have water for decades to come. So um, everybody's at. I mean, you know, you know, with Rob, um, Marlon, everybody, Shelley, uh, farm guys on the on the right of me. I mean, we're all adding something of value and working with our constituents and also uh, water purveyors, you know, they have a voice and listen to it. We try to do the best we can. And I've been here, you know, a few years and I really appreciate and I respect the board and the community uh, working with them. So, you know, this valley is going to grow big in the next 10 years, bigger than what, you know, don't listen to the news. This place is really going to grow big in the next 10 years. And uh, we're, we are ahead of the game because look at these numbers of our capacity and what we're using, we're not even using 50% of what we develop. And the most important thing in growth and quality of life is having the infrastructure in place before it actually happens. So that's what we've done as, as a seven member board. So I thank the public and I thank the board uh, as well. Yes. Uh, nothing to report except congratulations. So. Thanks. Gary? Yeah, congratulations to you guys, and um, it's going to be interesting the next five years in our rent down. Uh, will be 20% uh, a year, so we'll see how all that goes with the uh, farming in the, um, in the Animal Valley. But um, like Frank said, it's, uh, you know, we're going through some, some times now that we've, farmers never experienced. So with all the water master issues, hopefully it'll uh, all work its way through. And the fair starts uh, 
the 17th? Friday. 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 We'll see you there, Rob. <laughs> we see everyone there. Yeah, I see everyone there. That's it. Thank you. Item 10, attorney's report. Nothing to report. Item 11, old business. 11A, consideration of possible action to adopt resolution R1897, authorizing execution of documents necessary to complete the purchase of LA County, such to the parcel numbers 3275021017, 32750210183275021019 and 32750210020 and recordation of the grant deed. So second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there any reason to go into closed session? We have two updates for you in closed session. Okay, which? Uh, it would be item um, item D and E. All right. Do I have a motion? Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It okay, will go into closed session in about five minutes.